Let us all marvel at one of the greatest, most convoluted premises in video game history. 1999, what appeared to be a harmless meteorite crashing into the Nevada desert turned out to be Darkseed, an evil alien creature with horrible powers. By shooting strange magnetic rays, Darkseed had turned the helpless nation into zombies and had brought the Statue of Liberty to life to do his dirty work. These rays had also given him control over many deadly weapons, but none more powerful than the legendary samurai sword Shura. When the great head of the samurai Namakubi heard the sword had fallen into evil hands, he set off immediately for the United States. For only he possessed the strength and knowledge to recapture the magical sword and free the US from the evil clutches of Darkseed. I mean, wow. What any of that means is beyond me, but I'm not one to shy away from absurdist premises, so hey, let's just roll with it. That being said, Zombie Nation is absolutely one of the most bizarre games on the NES, beginning with your character. Unlike most shooters where you control a ship, or presumably you play as a person controlling the ship, in this game you play as the severed head of a dead samurai who drops vomit and shoots eyeballs. Okay. Zombie Nation was developed by Kaze and published by Meldak, which both sound like one-off Doctor Who characters. This is the only game either was involved with on the NES, but Kaze later developed the Akira Psychoball pinball game which is an amazing concept I need to play immediately, and Meldek produced, and I'm not making this up, Jennifer Love Hewitt's album, Love Songs. I don't know how Zombie Nation leads to that, but man, my life just got a little brighter and a little stranger. Then there's the cover art. Fuck yes. This is unequivocally my favorite cover artwork on the entire system. I mean, just look at these hand-sculpted zombies. These are amazing! The rest of this diorama is kind of a mismatch of tiny versions of real life buildings and objects. They all look great in the background, but I don't think the designers thought too much about the scale. Like check out this Hot Wheel car that's roughly the same size as the TV. The railroad crossing sign that's taller than the supermarket. Or this baby? That would be about a full story tall compared to the building it's being impaled upon. Well, I'm sold. Diving into the gameplay, you make Namakubi's head fly around America, blowing up rocks and buildings along with numerous enemies, all of which are built in front of a post-apocalyptic nightmare. You can destroy just about anything on the screen, even if you can't really tell what you can shoot and what you can avoid. Unlike most shooters, you have a life bar, so there's no one-hit, one-kill scenarios, although there are weird background hazards like smokestacks and laser beams that essentially do the same thing. The most impressive thing to me is the design of the tiles of the game. That is, the square shapes on the screen that make up the foregrounds, backgrounds, and sprites. They just really put a lot of detail into the look of everything. Like just check out the way the smokestacks animate, or the buildings explode into fire, or the way this massive river flows, it just gives an almost 16-bit vibe. The enemy sprites are way less detailed in comparison, and also super small, but I have a feeling this is the only way they could fit them into the limited memory of the cartridge, as there's already so much happening on the screen. I mean, just look at all this chaos. Oh man, and check out these boss fights. Holy shit! Two scale Statue of Liberty with laser torch and Medusa hair? Check. Axe wielding competitive bodybuilder who flexes you to death? Oh yeah. Alien Autopsy Blacklight Poster? This is the greatest game I've ever seen. Like most shooters, Zombie Nation is incredibly difficult. You can play the boards on easy or on hard, but believe me, the easy setting is insanely, unrelentingly hard. The programmer somewhat cheekily included the Konami code, so that if you pause and punch it in, you'll recover your health, but you can only use it once per level, and it doesn't work after you continue. Bummer. What else can we say about Zombie Nation? Well, alphabetically, it's the very last title in the NES library, which means whenever I grab a close-by game, it inevitably falls on its side. It's always been pretty rare, but currently it's in the top 10 rarest official NES games and goes for crazy prices these days. What's interesting to me is that with the exception of stadium events, if you look at the other super rare titles, they were all released between the years of 1992 and 1994 in the final years of the NES and well after the appearance of the Super Nintendo. Zombie Nation is the exception having dropped in 1991, so I can only attribute its obscurity to its bizarre premise. Overall, it may not be the best shooter on the NES, but few titles in the entire library can match its strangeness. 
I mean, I'd argue that Hattress is almost as weird of an idea as Zombie Nation, but seriously, this is a truly bizarre title, beginning with this introductory story and pervading every single aspect of its design. However, if you disregard what on the surface makes it such an oddity, you'll find that its distinct color palette, dynamic visual design, and all-out blitzkrieg attack of a gameplay experience are really what makes Zombie Nation so unique. Check it out. You won't forget it.